And Even to, the person at Home Depot was interested by this yesterday. Yeah. She's like, why are you doing that? She's going, you're going alone? I'm like, yeah, I'm going alone to South America. And she goes, why? Your anxiety. I go for adventure. She goes, oh, okay. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I, I need this from the checkout clerk at Home Depot. Welcome to Sex Talk with my mom. I'm Cam Potter. And I'm Karen Lee Potter. That's my mother. And that's my son. We chat about sex on a weekly basis and all the things you typically don't talk about with a parent. We like to make the most uncomfortable conversations comfortable. So strap in, strap on, and enjoy the ride. Welcome to Sex Talk with my mom. I'm Cam Potter. And I'm Karen Lee Potter, your mother, in case anyone didn't know that. I had forgotten. Well, guess what? I'm here. I'm mother to all. Mother to all. We got a very juicy, sneaky, free question of the week this week. And for those of you who don't know what we're talking about... We have a community of people who like to chime in and give us their own personal stories. And we are doing that today because we have a great question posed to us by one of our sneaky freaks. Yep, Adele, coming in hot with a wonderful question. We really found this intriguing. This question is, do you have anything you've been holding back from your partner about their performance in bed? If so, why? I thought about this question. Yeah, what, what have you uh, come to? I don't hold back shit. You don't hold back shit? No. What do you mean you don't hold back? You tell them everything you possibly th- think of? Yeah, I'll rate an orgasm. I'll tell him if I thought it w- he could have uh, come sooner or later or in the middle. You Why do, are you laughing? You, you, you hold back one thing. What is it? When you're having uh, glory hole fantasies. I don't hold back glory you hole tell fantasies. The, you tell I watch him. it with him. <laughs> I hold back nothing. You don't hold back any fantasies at all. Like I was thinking about this. Oh, fantasy. Yeah. Sometimes I I think it's better not to even see, put a little seed of doubt in his mind. If I'm like, oh, you know, that friend of yours is really hot. I don't want him, you know, thinking later on, oh, she might be interested in a friend of mine. Exactly. Do you like how I know what's going through your mind? Yeah, how did you know that? I know this answer to the question better than you do. So you knew I was going to say that. You didn't think I'd say, well, maybe you can last a little longer. Or... It doesn't surprise me that you uh, that you came back saying, I don't hold anything back. It does not surprise you. No. Do you hold anything back? Yes. What? I hold back, you know, because I'm not in a relationship. Right. So sometimes I'm meeting people for the first time and hooking up or, you know, so... You know, I'm not going to start critiquing their kissing or their hand jobs the first time I'm with them, unless it's like painful, you know? Yeah. If it's something like painful or if it's, if the person's not even paying attention to you, the you got to say something. The hand job is a little hard to, to explain. Why? Because I'm not even so sure what's going to feel well, best. You know what? You got the owner's manual to your dick. And if you aren't going to share that owner's manual with the person you're with, no matter what Stage one, date one, date 20, Listen, you're, you're only hurting yourself. You know, you could think of it like a Ferrari. You know, I, I could, I was born with the Ferrari. Of okay? course you are. And I think I know how to drive the Ferrari. But if someone else, like a race car driver comes in, they, they're going to drive a completely different way. That might be wonderful. That's a good point. So I'm open, you know, they can experiment on it. But if they, if it's not to your liking, you got to share the owner's manual and say, hey, yes, you're revving it up a little too quickly. Oh, there. yeah, I do. I, and I do share that. Yeah. yeah, what kind of things do you share? You know, it's a little too quickly. You know, it's a, you just yeah. a little, you're revving up too quickly. It's I think been, that's a wonderful phrasing, seconds. actually. It's It's way too fast. Way to too, way, yeah, you're going way too fast. <laughs> too much friction <laughs> right now. This is going to end very quickly because I'm very sensitive. Yes. See, I knew what you were going to say. Yeah, that's right. Don't, this is don't what happens get me when you're my... six and a half years in a podcast together. You know that you, your partner's answers. You call me your partner? A business partner. <laughs> Not my, not my a business partner. You're a business partner. Yeah. Not your son. Not my son in this case. Not my boss. Although you like to think so. Oh yeah, I like to think so. My ass. All right, should we go to uh, the sneaky freaks? Yeah. And if you guys want to participate in the next sneaky freak question of the week, we text you these questions once a week. Once a week. No, no, no spamming. No spamming. It's just a fun little back and forth between us. And what's that number, Cam? Three one zero three five six three nine two zero. Okay. So. Let's start with Adele. Let's do it. Because she's all excited. She's, oh my, OMG, you used my question. Aww. Adele, thank you for this wonderful question. I can't think of anything really because my current partner is checking in with me all the time. Then why would she ask the question? It is curious. It's curious. 
I don't know. What, what, what were you thinking when you asked this question, Adele? You're just curious what other people are doing? All right, we'll find out. Keep going. She goes on to say, he's asking me to give him notes, LOL. I've, I've taken out a book and highlighted parts and sent it to... You, legit notes. Legit. Bullet points. Highlight. Highlighted. highlighted notes. Yeah. She goes on to say, I wasn't open like the, that with the past partners, mostly because they didn't ask me for feedback and I didn't want to hurt their confidence in bed. It's let's, nice. Let, let's, let's break that down. Yeah, let's break it down. Let's break it down. What does that mean? They didn't ask me for feedback. So what if they don't ask? You provide. Maybe they're uncomfortable. You provide. Yes. Yeah. Confident people would tell them, hey, this is your feedback. You yeah. suck at oral sex. I will say, though, in the bedroom, it is like a very, or wherever the fuck you're fucking. On it the is floor. a sensitive area. It's a sensitive area. It's very vulnerable. You know, everyone's trying their best. Everyone's very, yeah. thinks, there's a lot of pride on the line. You might want to, if you're in a relationship with someone and you don't feel that comfortable of telling them during the act of sex, you wait till you have a cup of coffee the next day or sometime during the week when you're a little bit less fragile. Or if it has to happen during the bedroom, like if something's too aggressive or something, you know, be a little uh, compassionate with it. With like, the, what would you say if someone's like just completely going off on your dick and it's I don't know, just horrible? Maybe say it with a smile, like, "Hey, that, hey. hey, thank you for trying to pleasure me, but can you uh, can you do it a little lighter or something like that? A little that? lighter because my dick is gonna fall off. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, just something with kindness as opposed to, "Hey, cut that out." That would that would be a real boner killer for me. Yeah, so you have to read the room. And then the second part uh, is... I didn't want to hurt their confidence in bed. Right. It's nice that he asks and I try to do the same for him. So you can hurt each other's confidence in bed if you say, that is not my clit. Yes. That's my asshole. But you should speak up if it is. But You, should you speak. don't even respond to what I just said. That's not my clit. That's my asshole. <laughs> Who's getting confused between those two? Who knows? People can be confused. Especially ones who don't have sex that often and don't don't know what the female anatomy looks like. People, listen up. If you're going to learn anything from me, learn about your body first and then read up on your partner or a partner or the opposite sex or the same sex or whoever you're doing diddling with. Diddling? Diddling. With. <laughs> whoever you're diddle diddling with. <laughs> you got to learn what the other person is like. And there are some basic tenets, like certain body parts belong in certain places. What does that mean? Like, don't confuse the, the, the vagina with the vulva. Okay. Don't confuse the, the clit with, you know, just the G-spot inside. It's, it, it's, it's the same material, but it's a completely different well, organ. Did you become a fucking education show? Hey, all of a sudden I decided to become Susie Educator. Yeah, Susie, Susie Educator. Yeah. Susie Educator came out to play. Anyway, I, I love that, that the partner asks you for notes and you ask him for notes. That's I right. think that's a wonderful thing that you could do for your partner. Everybody can start it Why as not of today. Open that convo. You know? Open the convo. Yeah. Tell him sex talk as my mom said to do this and it's homework. We got a response from Hard Dick. Hard Dick says, no, but I do want to fuck you deep in your asshole. Okay. First of all, he didn't say asshole. <laughs> he said asshole. He, <laughs> I don't know what happened to the L in there, but who is he referring to, me or you? And is this a hit on or shit on? I don't know. This is, I, I, I don't know what that is. That's not a good response to this question. It's not. Do you a, have anything you've been holding back from your partner about their performance well, in bed? Well, maybe he thinks this is, maybe this is your partner in, in their mind. Excuse me? This could be a mind thing where they think that they're actually in a relationship with you. You think that this is directed to me? Yes. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, my asshole is not open to you and your your depth. Okay. <laughs> your depth. Yeah, he wants your to go dick. deep in my asshole. He wants to go real deep in how, my asshole. Well, how how do you feel about that? Do you feel like that's horned up? You got you horny. Yeah, you got know? real horned up just now. Okay. Vic, Victor says. I have held this back from my partner because it would revoke my access to the box. It's oh. the fact that we mostly do it missionary, and sometimes I wish I could tell her to ride the horse backwards so I can see that ass. I say, <laughs> Victor, just go for it. You, you got to Vic tell her you want to see her ass. That's a compliment. It is a compliment. When, who, who's not going to like saying, hearing, you know, I like you got a nice ass. I'd like to see it. Or he could couch it also even forwards and looking at the person in the eye and saying, oh, this is good because I can reach different parts, see, see different so eyes. You start with her facing you and then and switch, switch it around. It do, do you find it offensive if someone only wants to fuck you from behind? Yes. Yeah. I could imagine that that could be a little like uh Yeah, I'm I'm like, what the hell? Where am I in this? Yeah, what am I? Just an opening? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the hell with that. But but, but there is a time and a place, right? Yeah, they can move it. You know what? It's fluid. 
<laughs> it's fluid. It's fluid. It just moves with the nuisance. What? The fuck does that mean? You never heard of moving with the nuisance? No. Well, look it up. Oh my god. It's a it's a term. Okay. Christina says, I haven't told my boyfriend he doesn't satisfy me in bed because I don't want to hurt his feelings. A lot of people are very concerned about the feelings. I know. I've tried. Why? To- Why is it? You wouldn't, if you were like trying to teach someone how to play basketball, would it hurt your feelings if they said, hey, don't throw it back behind you, throw it in front of you? Well, imagine if this you, you, you're playing someone who thinks they know exactly how to play. But they don't know your body. Well, they're, they can hold a lot of pride again, you know, with that. You know, I used to write, I wrote an article. <laughs> you wrote an article where? Yeah, like it was an article that I put in my, one of my books, Cougar's Guide to Getting Your Ass Back Out There, I believe. And it's a, it's about when you um, train your pump, you train your lover like you do a puppy. Okay. Okay, so if you keep training your, your puppy that it's okay to shit on the floor, he's going to shit on the floor. If you keep training your lover that it's okay to, to fake an orgasm. Or that, that you're okay even just having sex okay a certain way. A certain way. You're teaching them bad behaviors. Okay, but listen to this, Susie, education. Yes, what? Christina goes on to say, I've tried to teach him for four years, and he just doesn't get it. So I let it slide because I like the intimacy and emotional connection so much. Mm -hmm. There's the sex therapist out there that you can go to, Christina. I suggest going to professional. Oh, wow. Like Susie education? Go to Susie education. There are definitely people out there that have actual degrees in sexuality. You, You better believe it. We got Joseph here who says, my partner is pretty good about listening to my needs. My biggest issue is getting her to open up about her needs. Yeah, I think that that's a cultural thing. You can, I think there's a way to to create a space where someone feels comfortable opening up. Like what would you do? Outside the bedroom. Yeah. You just say, hey, let's make a time just to reflect on what's going on in the bedroom and, you know, see if there's any, what's going well. What areas can use improvement? And what we plan to do that tomorrow? Look at that, Mister Sydney. This is Sydney sex education. <laughs> it's Susie a, education and Sydney sex, sex si- education. Yes, Sydney. Sydney. S- Sydney. Where did Sydney come from? I don't know. I was trying to think of an S. Why? Because I did, Cam. But why did I also get the Susie Sydney sex education? You're just Susie education. Oh well, you need to. What is spec- that? You're specifying. Okay. Anyway, all right, Joseph. I hope that helps. I, I create a time and place for it. That was actually a very good suggestion. Thank you. And um, I think that you'd be a very good therapist. Thank you so much, Mother. Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean is always the one who likes to stick pop rocks up his anal opening. <laughs> he says, uh, yeah, I have like a huge 12-inch micro penis." See, there you go. <laughs> Another complete moron. <laughs> I could say this in a loving way to Mr. Bean because he just he just is a bundle of fun. What the fuck does that mean, Mr. I don't Bean? know. He's got a 12-inch micro penis. A huge 12-inch micro penis. Well... Jinky for you. Jinky for you, Mr. Bean. Bring well, back that jinky bring it for back you. The jinky Are for you, you trying for... to make that like a thing? It's a new thing. Yeah. No, it's actually that and what I told you going to the news. And so those are both terms that you should look up from what decade. Oh, are you doing ageism on me right now? No, I'm just curious. I've never heard this. What in decade? My, literally, I've been alive de- since 19, the 1980s. It's been around before that even. Definitely. It was never used ever since I, I, in all my life, I've never heard anything like that. Jinky for you? Jinky for you. Yeah, jinky for you. Can you look it up? Look it up. Look it up right now. All right, I'll look it up. Jinky for you. Uh, It was, nope, nope, nothing. No no jinky. It's not coming up here a lot. Uh, Nothing. Nope. Nothing in there. (laughs) Literally nothing. Nothing. (laughs) Jinky for you. What about going, moving to the nuisance? (laughs) We're just moving past. Moving to the nuisance. Jinky for you is a KLP term, apparently. Moving to the nuisance is, I'm seeing some search results for this. Some? Yeah. Exactly how many? Millions. Uh, 41 million. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, What is coming to the, wait, coming coming to the the nuisance? No, one important defense is called coming to the nuisance. It applies when the harmful activity was operating before the plaintiffs acquired the property impacted by the nuisance. See? You're using a legal term? I'm, I'm teaching Improperly? You. I'm improperly teaching you legal terms. Shall we move on to Khalil? Yeah, okay. It is not, it's Kaylee. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see. Glasses don't help. Uh, you're not wearing glasses. I know, but if I put them on, they don't help. Khal- I almost called her Khalil as well. I was going to call her Khaleesi. Kaylee says, 
I dated a guy and the sex was horrible every time, but I was so charmed by his personality that I never told him. He went on to cheat on me. What a fuckhead. And he's, che- and he's probably giving bad juju vibes to whoever he's cheating with. Yeah, good. Gagas on. Oh, a little Yiddish charm. Gay yeah, you don't need, you don't need that guy. Gold. Fuck that. But, you know, maybe I, it's interesting. If you don't feel comfortable enough sharing. Right. That like it could teach somebody a, to cheat. It's kind maybe, of, it's maybe. an indicator, you know, like yeah. there's some discomfort here in the relationship. And maybe that's the discomfort that led to this person cheating. Right, cheat, or you yeah. could tell that this is the type of person cheating. I don't know. These are all conjectures. This is not what a therapist would do. I'm not a therapist. You just play I, one on TV. I'm just a fucking Sydney sex educator. Lisa says, not really. I have said it all when I was mad. <laughs> She goes, not really. I have said it all when I was mad. And it went along the lines of, stop being a selfish, lazy lover. You're just worried about your nut. Someone finally spoke up. Thank you, Lisa. You always identify with Lisa. I do, don't yeah. I? Lisa and I are one. We are one with our thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's speaking up. But yeah. it's speaking up when Lisa's angry. Yeah, I don't think that's a great idea either. But I mean, you know, it's good to speak up. Otherwise, you know, you're teaching bad behaviors. Final one. Maddie. Maddie. Maddie says, the only thing I can think of is that I really wish he was a little more aggressive. Now, I've gotten this note before. You want, They want you to be aggressive? One of my first lovers <laughs> who told me she wanted me to be more aggressive. And I didn't know what the fuck that meant. Oh, I remember you did a whole podcast with her. I was trying. No, I didn't. She, I wanted, someone wanted you to be more aggressive. There was another person. It was a different one. Yeah. They, they just shoved you up against the wall and like molested you. No, that was another one. Oh, my God. <laughs> Actually, so, I'm so basically, it's it's a trend. I'm, I'm, I, those three, those three did it. You know, because I'm I'm up all about the intimacy and the connection. You and know, you, and you don't want someone were, slamming your head against the wall saying "fuck me." These were much younger women who I think were you know they had been admittedly they would say that they were impacted by porn and it was a more casual experience for them. So Remember. they were looking at this as a more casual experience. So they I, they wanted it just aggressive and yeah. you know passion you know passionate or like you know I don't know much more uh, aggressive. Yeah. And for me, Would I didn't you say feel assertive that assertive or aggressive. There's a difference. Well, Maddie's saying aggressive. Maddie, there isn't a there is a difference. I, and I was told by the one I was thinking of at first, and then you reminded me of about six other examples that. The, uh, she really did want me to like throw her around and stuff like that. And I was like, I, that's not coming naturally. I'll try doing that, but yeah, it feels weird. You know, it's really funny. Hmm. Initially, when you're so into someone for the first time, they throw you up against the wall and they lift you and do this. And then after several years down in the relationship, you're like, are you kidding me? You almost messed my hair up when you <laughs> moved me against the wall. You, I just broke my fucking back. Like, yeah, what are you doing here? There's a bed right here. Why are you throwing me up against the wall? It, and, and it, it definitely depends on the person I'm with. You know, I might have that instinct with more, with different, it just wasn't coming up with, with these girls. And it was early on in my sexual history. Oh, and now? Yeah, now I'm an aged, you know, veteran of this song. You're a veteran. Yeah. And you've been doing a podcast about sex, so you yeah. learned a lot from your fellow podcasters. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder if some of it's performative, just because I've been told that so much. Yeah. Yeah. I don't well, know if it's... Com- sometimes it comes naturally, sometimes not, though. I don't know. Anyway, whatever the case may be, it's interesting. Maddie goes on to say he's gotten better at that over the past three years, but I don't know how to bring it up with him. He was in a past relationship where he faced sexual abuse, so I think he holds a little bit of trauma from that. Well, we didn't even bring that up. That's another issue. Yeah, which I've also had my experience Yeah, if you've with. been with someone who's had trauma, and then... I, or I've experienced... Or you've been traumatized. Yeah, I have. Yeah. So then, then a lot of times people don't want to bring anything up. In that situation, it wasn't, it was just like, you know, not being so, not wanting it to happen, but getting, getting pushed yeah. onto me. But yeah. it wasn't like aggressive. It well, was more consent. assertive. It was consent. more assertive. Yeah. Consent. We yeah. have to remember to always have consent. And Maddie goes on to say, and I don't want to make him uncomfortable by bringing it up. Sometimes the uncomfortable conversations have to happen. They got to do it. You're, you're listening to this podcast, making the uncomfortable comfortable. But yeah, it, quote it is by it, Sydney sexologist. Yeah, Sydney sexologist. I think especially if this person has had, you know, sexual abuse in their in their past. Uh, it's a whole nother. You, it's consider consideration and compassion is extremely important here. And also seeing a good therapist for that too. A lot of a lot of therapy recommended for the you, for the ones the the conversations that just seem to never go anywhere. 
Thank you very much to everyone who's contributed. Yeah, this was, was like a heavy duty conversation. We, Usually we're a lot lighter. This. Like, you were know, you expecting this? I was expecting it. Yes, when you said this is the possible question, I said let's do it. Let's. It do, was a juicy let's, one. Let's do the juicy, heavy duty sex one, and uh, see where we go from there. Yeah. And I think we did a pretty damn good job. We covered all the bases. Yeah, well, thank you to everyone who contributed. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate and, and, you being honest and telling us your story. And we love chatting with you. So if you're at all inclined, give us a text at 310-356-3920. We'd love to hear from you. Mother. Yes. I had a dream this morning. Oh, no. Yes. Was it a wet dream? It wasn't a wet dream, oh. no. What? But it was sexual. I was thinking of myself in Colombia getting a hand job. Yeah. And it was too aggressive and it was dry. Oh, I swear to God. Yeah, nothing worse than a dry I think chub it's, rub. it's my unconscious mind telling me I need to take Uber Lube to Colombia. Oh, and I have travel packs. Uber Lube, Lube to, to save, save the day. day. Uber Lube comes in all different shapes and sizes, but they're definitely ones for travel. By the way, Uber Lube is for everyone, all ages, women that are going through menopause, men that are looking for something to put between their legs when they run. Let me tell you something. Uber Lube is a luxurious, high-grade silicone lubricant made from clean body friendly ingredients it's our favorite lube because it's made with silicone and a little vitamin e you know what i love what that it's great for all kinds of play vaginal oral or anal that's right it lets skin feel skin you know it's not gunky and goopy and just you just kind of you wanted to get off immediately once you put it on no 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 it's a very nice layer that just is perfect for whatever you're trying to do with another person. It gets a nice slip and a little slippery. Right now, Uber Lube is offering a sex talk with my mom listeners, you sneaky little freaks, a special offer, 10% off and free shipping when you use code MOM at uberlube.com. That's 10% off and free shipping. Use code MOM at U-B-E-R-L-U-B-E.com. That link is in the episode description. If you're having trouble getting it up or keeping it up, we have a simple solution for you. Really simple solution. It's RexMD. RexMD makes getting generic and branded Viagra super easy. Everything's online, even the prescription, and they deliver it to your door. You don't need to go into the office. You don't need to talk to a receptionist. It's super simple. And it's less embarrassing, and, and you can. it's all confidential. And then you know what else I like about it? Viagra couldn't cost up to $90 a pill, but RexMD has generic Viagra, which is just only $2 a pill. Here's what I like about it. You can access your RexMD physician anytime you need after you meet with them. Except for you, who's probably going to put a look, a picture with this, like a line going down, <laughs> don't answer this guy's call. <laughs> it's very easy. You just fill out a quick medical questionnaire on their website, and a U.S.-based doctor will review your situation and prescribe you generic Viagra if it's appropriate. It works on the very first night. And the medication gets shipped to your door right away with free two-day shipping. You can't beat it. Starter packs of generic Viagra are now available for you sneaky little freaks. Just go to rexmd.com slash mom to get started. That's rexmd.com slash mom. The link is in the episode's description. How is this? How's your life going, Cam? I, 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 all I know is that you've been to a lot of doctors and clothing stores. I'm prepping. Prepping a lot. You are so... Last night, you were telling me all the things that you did before you went on your trip. It's crazy. And I, first of all, I'm not on my trip yet. It turns out we thought last week it was going to be our final yeah, in-person he, we're recording. We're still here. We're still, still here, here. Still in person together. I actually leave for my trip a week from today. Right. And we started, I, I literally had a laughing attack last night. Why? Because we're talking about all this prep you're doing it, and all these these provisions you've been made. Going to the eye doctor. Getting the, insurance. The, the skin doctor, the foot doctor, an acupuncturist, my regular doctor, my regular doctor's PA who finally quit on me. I getting shots, going, getting insurance, uh, preparing for my phone bill, and then and then I say to you, you know what it might happen? <laughs> you did all this done. You're there for a week, and you're like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm coming. I'm out of here. Well, then at least I tried it out. That's right. Yeah. People ask me like, what do you think about Cam doing this no digital nomad? I'm like. When other time in his life is he going to be able to do something like this? Why are people asking you this? Because they, they just find it very interesting. And Even the person at Home Depot was interested by this yesterday. Yeah. She's like, why are you doing that? She's going, you're going alone? 
I'm like, yeah, I'm going alone to South America. And she goes, add why? To your anxiety. I go for adventure. She goes, oh, okay. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I, do, I need this from the checkout clerk at Home Depot. Do you like give up an aura of uh, un- uncertainty, uncertainty and dangerous situations? No, you, you are a f- you got a very heightened flight or fight response. Fight or flight? Yeah. Well, I'm on my toes. You're, and those toes have been looked at. <laughs> they have been looked at prior, prior to this. Yeah, I l- yeah. fucking love the podiatrist. How by do the you way, love a podiatrist. Fucking love the podiatrist. I, 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 usually, when I'm with a doctor, I have a whole list of questions. And after question number three, they're like, all right, we're done here. Yeah, we're not going to continue asking questions. I have questions. experienced that too when someone said, uh, okay, we have two people waiting and I've, I've spent a lot of time with you. Exactly. And then diagnose me with some horrible disease and then say it's time to move on. Fuck that guy. Fuck that quack. The podiatrist, on the other hand, was willing to field all of my questions I was literally getting down to how do I improve the dexterity of my toes? And why do you want to dis- improve the dexterity of your toes? He also said... No, why? Because I like to have that dexterity and control over my body. You're just jealous because your brother can play piano with his toes. I-, I told that to the podiatrist as well. And the podiatrist told me, you know, it's really a useless skill unless you plan to make art with your toes, which I had never considered, but now I am. But your toes are not that de- dexterity. De- I know, but I, he gave me some te- techniques to improve my de- dexterity. So you're going all the way to South America to learn how to move move a part of your body that doesn't need to be moved. No, it just happened to be that he was there and I was able to ask some questions I could, because of the kind of the numb toe and, you know, Can we all get that. back to the yeah. doctors that have left the practice because of you and I? Yeah, and who stopped. So this yeah. is crazy. <laughs> On the last episode, we we informed you that after the day after I saw the doctor's physician's assistant, he... We get a note from the doctor. We get a note from the doctor. The PA is quitting, <laughs> moving away from the practice. And it had nothing to do with the fact that he saw Cameron Potter the day before. Okay. Then, this week... Yeah. I decided to refer two people to the doctor, the, the doctor that's the head doctor staying there. We love our doctor. And I found out he is no longer accepting new patients. I, I bet he's cleaning house. He's going to try to get rid of us too. He's, he's really, he, he's, he's going back and forth with me trying to get, push me to get this HPV vaccine. Oh, so you got in touch with him on I his vacation? T- yeah, he's back on board. Oh my God. I got God. two of the three doses. I don't want to get the third dose. He's pushing. We'll see. All right. I didn't need to get into that. That's a, that's a <laughs> dark area. Anyway. Um, what else is going on? Still flirting with women on Bumble. In South America. In South America. I'm looking for a doctor. I'm looking for a doctor. I basically, Why I'm don't looking you look for, for a, a clown. How about a podiatrist? Looking for a podiatrist. Podi- podiatrista. I wonder, if that, I wonder if that's how you call it. Anyway, I have no clue how I'm coming across. I don't know the language. I don't know the words I'm saying to her, if it even makes sense. And I also don't know if, in the context of this conversation, how I'm appearing. And so I'm I, like I shooting can relate in the dark. To this. I can relate to this because I could tell you that when I was in Italy on, on with with your father, this was so many years ago, and I was trying out my Spanish because Spanish he in was, Italy, yeah, because he was, you know, your dad was bilingual, could speak Spanish fluently, and apparently Spanish is very close to Italian. So he was able to communicate with this cab driver completely in Spanish and, and answering back in Italian. No way. I decided to, to try my hand at Spanish. Oh, God. You can't and even speak Spanish to a Spanish-speaking person. I know. So I, I said, te amo. Why? Do you know what te amo means? I love you. I know. I was trying to say my name is. Me amo. Yeah. I, I Dingus. Said, ah. So what, what did that person say? Well, it's your father and he both started laughing. Oh, my God. So you got, I, when you are talking to these people in South America, who knows what you're saying? Oh, my fuck. I, it's not that I don't know the words necessarily. It's just like in the phrasing correctly. Texting is you know, messaging people is never good in English. In English, for an English speaker, So right? what the hell are you doing? I don't Why know. Why don't you just it's wait to get there? I, I know. I probably should, but I'm wondering you're if I'm going to... turning people off before they even meet you. That is true. That is true. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to use all the resources. And That's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm swiping through all... Anyway. Don't start swiping. Yeah, anyway. Swiping is the worst thing. Getting back to your friends uh, making fun of me for, for um, going on this ad- adventure. By the way, we haven't told anyone who's new to this podcast. Oh, right. I'm moving to Colombia and then Argentina for the next three months. Three months? I thought it was two months. Two and a half. 
it's, you're counting down the days until yes. I return? Yes. Two and a half months. I'm very upset right now. I thought it was only two months. No, it's two and a half months. Right. Anyway, <laughs> I feel like uh, what? young Bilbo Baggins. From The Hobbit? Yes. You're a dwarf? No, not a dwarf, a hobbit. A little, per- little person? No. A little hobbit. A little, a young hobbit. Why do you feel like you're a hobbit? By the because way, your young... pants that you were showing me looked very hobbit-like. You told me I looked very elfish. Yeah. But again, those are elves, not hobbits. Okay, I'm sorry. Young Bilbo, he was he, he had this inclination he should go on this adventure, but he comes from the Shire. The hobbits don't like adventure. Oh, so and you're, they would you're all Bilbo. judge him. They would judge him for you're, going you're on these saying, adventures. You're saying that the people surrounding you are the judging habits, me, including judging. the girl from Home Depot who's fucking judging me. I'm not judging Ruth. You. I love Ruth, though. She was a sweetheart. I do, I do laugh at some of the things that have happened to you in prior years. We're not going to go there. Trips. Mom, don't bring that negativity into the shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of negativity. What? We have a new segment of our show. Is it a negative segment? Is it? No. Oh, speaking of positivity. Yeah. We have a new segment on our show. It's called Weekly Rummagings. Weekly Rummagings. Do you want to click that Instagram link? And Okay, Weekly Rummagings is, you know, things that we found during our little rummagings yeah, I, over the I, week. I rummage a lot. So this is a this is a clip that I was sent from a friend. I, Mom, I don't know if you've seen this yet. So I have seen it, and I was dying over you it. You saw it? I saw it, but I had to turn the volume on. All right, do you want me to play it? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah, well, you got to see the visual as a woman eating a very tasty radish. Okay, you ready? By the way, do you like radishes? Fucking love radishes. Do you like radishes? I love radishes too. Okay, here we go. They're undervalued. Uh, it's an vegetable. older woman. She's she's uh, very very into her radish. Would you rather have a radish than sex? If it was good sex, then I would rather have sex. But if it was bad sex, I'd rather have a radish. I absolutely agree with her. You would rather have I rather a radish have, than bad sex? Yeah. I would not. I have a friend of mine who broke up with a boyfriend, and she, all she wants to do is have another dick inside of her just to forget about the boyfriend. Okay. I would rather just, I told her. Just, eat a radish. I'd rather eat a radish and please myself with my many, many sex toys. Okay. Than to just take a random dick with other problems. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, you don't know what you're getting it. You know, it's such a red herring. You think... Ah, just having sex alone is just wonderful. Yeah. But then you think of, gee, you just, a Everything tiny that can little go wrong. extra thought about all the other things that this that accompanies it. And then you're like, wow, I'll eat my radish. Well, it just is a little more, it's a little weightier than just, let's just go fuck. I mean, for some people, I guess it's fine. But for me, it's, it, we it's know. definitely. All right. What is it for you? It's got to be meaningful. And no, deep. it doesn't need to. But I, there's other, there's there's different uh, considerations here. You know, the well, other well, person. Well, let's get the list. The other person's feelings. The other, you know, what what it will be like when our bodies physically get together. What's going to feel like afterwards if we're going to want to spend time together? What, the emotions. I don't even want to even go through that. What about the thoughts occurring before that sexual encounter? Exactly, exactly. The whole date going and leading into it. I'm thinking about what your fears are. There's no fears. We're not going to the dark spot. Okay. You're you're you're, well, real, you're like a little uh, whirlpool right now, and you're trying to bring me to the dark side. I'm, I'm not, not going I, there, Mom. I'm not going there. I'm I just, see you. I'm you're talking praying about in the abyss prior right now. episodes when you've said that you need to find out about their sexual. I said don't history. go there. I said don't go there. Um, and you're 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 I'm you're reading. circling the world. So you're, you're not, whirlpooling. You you're are whirlpooling. cutting it off. You are not going to be like that anymore. That's right. I want. I, 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 I'm aware of my considerations, good. but I'm not going to perseverate on them. You're whirlpooling, and I'm not taking. I'm, no. You're not taking me down with you. You're not eating any radishes. I will eat some radishes, and I will have sex when it's appropriate. I can't wait to hear. For me, will you share it with the, your sneaky freaks here? Maybe in a few months. Okay. We'll see. We got a nice text from a listener that I wanted to talk about. What is that? Okay, this is from Renee. Hi, guys. I'm catching up on a previous episode and just listened to episode 369 and heard something troubling. At the very beginning of the episode, you two briefly discussed the concept of clitoral hood piercings, and it was met with much disgust and judgment. But there's no need for that. In my experience, good piercings are a way to adorn an already amazing area of the body, to feel a sense of autonomy over your own genitals, and can be so therapeutic to those who have suffered sexual abuse female genitalia mutilation, or gender dysphoria. But 
The best thing about this piercing is its benefits to its owner. Clitoral hoods piercings are scientifically proven to increase sensation, arousal, and satisfaction in the person who owns one. I'm sending a link to the study published by the American Journal of Obstetrics. How do you say that? Obstetrics. And gynecology to back up my claims. I hope you'll research it more and maybe be less revolted by the thought once you see it in a different light. Thank you. Love you both so much, Renee. Renee, I apologize. You know what? I didn't know any of this. I was completely ignorant. I had no clue. That it could be so beneficial. I actually thought of it more like mutilation than anything else. And I don't know, you know, if everyone necessarily is going to agree with Renee on that it can help with sexual trauma or whatever. But, you know, there's because I immediately went to the dark side and thought about all the negative stuff that I've heard about, like clitoral removals and things like that. You were thinking of gen- of uh, genital muli- mutilations, yeah. yeah. So, but this is not the case. Well, it's the same thing with the tattoo. It's whatever floats your boat. Whatever, if you, if you a, like it, do it. It's a form of. I love that. It's a form of self-expression. I think after hearing that, I'm going to get my clip pierced. <laughs> I love that. It, it's a way to really take. It, it gives you a sense of autonomy. How would you feel genitals? if I told you in the next podcast that I decided to put my money where my mouth is and go get my clip pierced? I would be blown away. But I will <laughs> say, after reading this, I tried to I tried to read the article. The article, unfortunately, was thirty nine ninety nine, and I didn't want to pay for it. You cheap mother, you know what? Well, she gave me the the uh, the gist of it. The gist. You got the cliff notes. I got the jinky, and then I went to YouTube and I started researching. Oh, look people's at you. responses through going through this type of uh, piercing. And is, are they all similar? So, you know, they talk about it being. It is a very sharp pain. One described it oh. as like an eight out of ten, but it's very brief. Like it's, when you get your ears pierced. Exactly. It, 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 I mean, this person had a ton of piercings. So I, she, for her to say that this was an 8 out of 10, you know, that's it's gonna be, super that's gonna be very pain. painful. She also said that it was kind of done improperly. So that could have created some oh pain for her. Oh, my God. But she got it redone. And she's a much better. But it's a very sensitive area. I mean, if you're doing it for that reason, that's great. But if you're doing it to please somebody else, that's not so great. She then went on to go on to say all the benefits that it has for her sex life and how that, that pain was very, very short-lived, just like an instant. So... I mean, I, I can see, I can see value to it. I I can't. It's same as why I won't get a nose ring because if there's something that goes wrong, like I get a bad cold, like if I had COVID, last thing I want is that nose ring. For, for what? I guess you could take take it out and put it back in. Anyway, Renee, I'm glad you took us out of ignorance. I'm yeah. sorry that we uh, offended, offended you. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm grateful that you educated us. If you little sneaky freaks have something to say about clitoral piercings, please let us know at 310-356-3920. We'd love to hear what you have to say. You added some other rummagings to the rummagings folder. I certainly did. This was brought to me, my attention by your sister. Okay. What is it? I don't know if you know about this, Cam, but there's a social star, Addison Ray. She's social media like queen. She's probably like 20. Okay. Don't know about it. Her mom, Sherry, debuted her relationship with rapper Jung Gravy at Young the Young Gravy. Why does it say Jung Gravy? No, it says you can't read it. Young. Y-U-N-G. Young Gravy at the VMAs. Tapped his phone. And I found out she's 42 and he's 26. Who gives a fuck? I love to hear a nice cougar relationship. Oh, my God. Why do you care what Addison Ray's mother... I also, and not only that, but I I was interested to see what the comments were. Some of the comments were girls going, what the fuck? It's interesting. So Addison Ray is how old? She's 42. No, Addison Ray's mother is 42. Oh, I, I'm not 100% sure how old she I'm guessing she's around 20-ish. And then how old Maybe is the younger. Guy? 26. This is very close. He's, he could easily be dating her. Yeah. Very interesting. That That probably creates some interesting family dynamics. Yep. That's why people are going, what the fuck? But I, I think it, you know, it, it is interesting because I think as you get older, like I know a 94 year old dating an 87 year old, that doesn't sound so weird. Yeah. It's not as big of a gap. Not as big an age gap. But when you get to the, in the early 20s and 30s, it seems like it's. What is this other picture over here? Oh, I found this on the internet. It's a picture of Bill Clinton in a heavy duty talk with my friend. I say my friend because I met her twice, Ruth. Dr. Ruth. Dr. Ruth. You, is, are these two of your favorite people on the planet? I like them both a lot. Yeah, your fucking dream sex. You're, you're Back in the day, not currently. I don't want to have sex with them currently, although I do want to have sex with the young Elvis. What the fuck? I saw a little bit of the uh, Elvis movie, and he 
was really sexy. Yeah, what, was it actually him or is someone playing him? No, it's him. it's a documentary. Or, oh, or I don't know. I saw YouTube videos of maybe. of Elvis. Yeah, I didn't realize because he was a little before my time. Even I didn't realize how sexy that guy is. That guy can move, you know. He's got those. Mo- and you know what's funny? You were obsessed with Elvis when you were growing up. A good taste growing up. Yeah, I, I didn't know where that came from. Sneaky freaks, if you're looking for a mattress, we have a suggestion for you. It's called Helix Sleep. Here's how I know it's good. First of all, I sleep on it and fucking love it. Second of all, all the people in our Pleasure Podcast Network sleep on them. And they are constantly asking me to go back to Helix Sleep and ask them for more mattresses to be sent to them. Because they're individualized. That's what people don't get. You can't, it's not a one size fits all. This is like a Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You've got to find one that fits your body. They have mattresses for everyone. They have models with memory foam layers to provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side. They have models with a more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support in your stomach and back sleeping positions. And you know what I like? The enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night because a lot of women my age get a little overheated. So you might be wondering, how do they know the perfect mattress for me? Well, you can take their very simple quiz online and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. Because like I said, no no two people are alike and therefore you need to find the mattress that's going to work for you. Your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door, free of charge, and it's kind of risk-free. If you don't like it, you have 100 days to return it. They'll come and pick it up for you. And right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash sex talk with Helix Better Sleep Starts Now. That's helixsleep.com slash sex talk. One word. That link is in our episode's description. What's going on in your life, mother? Oh, I got lots of stuff going to share. I just got over COVID. Congratulations on coming out. (laughs) Coming out of the dungeon. It's been a whirl, and I got to tell you, I got yelled at by my the condo association president because I was up on the roof. He thought you, I was I was you exposing already about of it. it. Yeah. I already talked about. It. Well, yeah. I confronted him. Oh wow! I decided. <laughs> go, oh the, no! The president, I said to him, um, "Are we still friends?" He goes, "What are you talking about? This is what I love." I said, "Well, last I heard, last I saw of you, you were coming at me and you were shaming me and you were being rude to me about being up on the top deck during COVID." And he goes. I got no beef with you. Now, I got a beef with someone who says to me when I tell them I got a beef that they don't have a beef with me. But you didn't say I got a beef. You said, are we still friends? Like, hey, do you still like me? Yeah. And that's so cougarish of you. No, no, no. That was just to initiate the conversation. I know. Believe me, it became very cougarish. And I told him how I felt about the way he attacked me. Oh, wow. And how he wanted me to be not honest and not tell people that I have COVID. What a fuckhead. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I actually... I didn't mean to call this guy fuckhead. Well, it's kind of fuckheadish. Yeah, well, I don't like lying to the community. Yeah, that's what he recommended lying next time if I get COVID. Oy. I'm just not the lying type. He's I'm just dealing with people complaining and not realizing. Exactly. That. Who the hell wants to be a condo association president? Who even wants to be a member of a condo association? He doesn't even want to be a condo association president. And then I thought I'd share one other story. Okay. So during COVID, I got very stiff. Okay. I thought I need a massage badly. So I'm over COVID. Just so you know, if you're a member of... If I just want you to understand that I didn't do anything to expose anybody. I immediately canceled all my appointments for two weeks and tested negative before I went and got a massage with your sister. No one gives a fuck. I get this massage. I'm in the room with this guy and he's saying to me stuff like, you like a lot of pressure. And it, I knew there was something a little off of the speech. And then I, he says, I am deaf. I'm like, oh my God, this is perfect. He starts telling me if you want more pressure, you do a thumbs up. If you want less, you do a little a little other gesture with your hands. And if you like it a lot, you do the okay sign. This was a perfect massage. It was a perfect massage. And he was not bad on the eyes either. Oh my fucking god! You it, were you were attracted to this masseur? I got there, but then then I decided to do a whole TikTok video about oh my the ten things you don't do during a massage, and I thought I'd share them with our listeners. So wait, so wait, do you hold you on before you do this? How great was that massage? Do you think that the massage was incredible because he had like this extra sensory yes, perception? Wow. That's exactly it. You you should go find someone who's missing like missing one of the senses if they because the others are if, heightened. If they can't see, it's perfect. They're, they're, How are you going to find people that are lacking in one sense and 
Well, I found someone lacking in, in the hearing. Do you think that I have um, a heightened sense of touch because I can barely see? Yes. Wow. That's it. We figured it all out. Huh. But I got to tell you something. At the end of the massage, I just kind of like, I wanted to show him my exuberance for how good it was. So I'm doing an okay sign, but I realized I was giving him scuba diving signals. Oh my fucking he God. He must have thought I was insane. Oh my God. Well, anyway, here's- Were you the, giving a lot of direction? I gave no direction. I was just so happy with the pressure. And wow. He, he said, is the pressure good? And I gave the okay sign and then it was good. Wow. The worst thing is when you get a chatty masseuse. Yeah, which, which happened to me last time. I didn't mind it, though, because I was also attracted to her. Oh, my God. You used it as a dating site. You, you, your massages are not Bumble. All right. Go on. All right. So here's so 10 things that you do not do during a massage. Okay. Like Karen Lee Poder. Okay. <laughs> you can find it on my TikTok as well. Okay. The first five. First of all, don't speak. Is this you or the masseur? Me. Okay. This is, as a... As a um, client do not speak if you speak you're going to get a whole dissertation of their life okay. just there's no way around it second if they ask you for a specific area to get massaged don't tell them because if they do then they're going to like if you say my upper back you get nothing in the full body you just get the upper back for the entire 50 minutes uh, okay very annoying yep agreed number three don't lie about taking a shower what and someone actually responded to that too okay. if you like did what I did when I went to Las Vegas. I came up from the pool. I had suntan lotion on me and I did a quick, quick rinse and I got onto the table <gasps> and halfway through the massage, she starts sneezing and saying, did you not take a shower? And she's shaming me like, like oh the condo association God. president. She's like, or did you not take a shower? I said, yeah, I took a shower and did a quick rinse. I didn't soap up or anything. She goes, well, I'm deathly allergic to deathly. suntan lotion. You need to leave. Oh, my God. That massage Wait, ended quickly. That's got to happen with all of her all clients. All the clients. That's Who doesn't nuts. do that? What am I going to do? Like a deep body scrub before I get on the table? Oh, my God. Wait, it's, by a, the way, it's a place in Vegas, by the way. Can I ask you for this most recent massage? Yes. Did you fart or anything? Cause well, I, I'm getting there. Okay. Because you're, I was going to... You're I jumping. Was, I was just wondering if he had this extra sensory, you know, Smell? olfactory glands as well. No, I, luckily, I did not fart, thank God. But anyway, don't lie about taking that shower. Okay. Also, number four, don't get horny. Impossible. It can't... <laughs> Every fucking time. Even if it's a guy. Someone's massaging my body. You're very sensitive. Yeah. You know that. Well, if you get horny, you kind of ruin the whole massage yourself because then you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, what if he's getting too close to the private areas? I may have an orgasm on the table and things I'm like fine that. It. I'm fine. You're fine having coming all over the table? Yeah, fine. Totally has, fine. Has that ever happened to you? No. You thought about that? Yeah. Well, I, I, I was also thinking about your previous question. Even if it's a guy, do you get horned up? I actually don't think I've ever gotten a massage from a guy. Oh, you got to try it. Isn't that interesting? All right, moving on. Don't tell them it's too much pressure because then it's going to be too light. Done that. If you don't, and if you say it's you need more pressure, you're really going to be screwed because he's going to break you, going to break you like a pretzel. Okay. Number six, don't ask about their kids. You do what, not. Why don't are you start a whole conversation. About this shit? You don't even start at the beginning because later on they're going to in the middle of the massage remember. Oh, I didn't tell you about this birthday party uh, my seventh or seventh grader went to. Number seven, don't drink too much water. This is the worst. Because you're pissing all over the place. Yeah, you need a lot of water, though, to to, dehydrate, to you know to hydrate yourself before and after massage. So it's kind of a conundrum. It is a conundrum. Number eight is something what, like what you said. Try not to fart. Yeah. The whole time you got to hold that shit in. It's going to be horrible if you're in a little room and it smells like fart. <laughs> yeah. And, and number nine is something that I did is if you have to pee, just just get up in the middle of the massage and do it. Just, uh, I did this the other day. I said, that's it. I said, it was a different masseuse because I've been getting lots of massages lately after COVID. And I told him, I got to get up and take a shower. I mean, and take a pee. And he's like, okay, I'm pulling the whole sheet off the table and run over to the bathroom, pee with a sheet all over the place. Who oh knows if I got God. pee on it. It's disgusting. It, it, but it's worse to hold it in. And the last one, and this was brought to you by one of my friends. Do not fall asleep. That's you say just say it's a hundred dollar massage. That's like over a dollar a minute that you're sleeping. You're right. I guess sometimes it pays if you won't need a good night's sleep. Yeah, it's nice. But that those are my top ten things not to do during a massage. Do you Thank have anything you very to add? Much. No, I I agree with all those things. And yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. That was I'm hoping that was mom's news because that was pretty essential news for the world that um, it was not mom's news. Mom's news is very, very, very funny though. Okay, let's hear Stay it. tuned for mom's news. Let's go to mom's news. Well 
You wanted to do hit on or shit I on? I thought we'd do hit on or shit on. We it's, got time some for, it's time for hit on or shit on. Hit, hit on, on or, or shit, shit on. on. This is the segment of the show where we get to look at your comments wherever you leave them and determine if it is a hit on or a shit on. I just thought you'd like the comments that were on. I haven't seen any of these, by the way. Oh, well, why don't you take a look here? Let's go through some of these comments. Yes. Because clearly we had a little difference in opinion here. Yes, and and I pinned one of them, actually. It, this The one you pinned says, I'm with you, Kim. They have to at least seem to be into what's happening yeah. in porn. A lot of people were with you. Yeah, I like that. I, who, who wants to watch porn where the, there's no connection? Well, I don't give a shit if there's a connection at all. <laughs> okay. What The next one says, this is my kind of guy. Hard to find a guy into that. So I guess that's a hit on. It's a hit on, but also kind of a shit on. Hard to find a guy that's into it. I mean, it makes me feel a little like the little the, Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> well, that's that's a compliment. Yeah, I guess so. Thank you very much, Dawn Sunshine. Brooke says, yeah, you're right, Kim. Look these are all hidden. That's right. I'm surprised you put this in here. No, you usually don't. don't be surprised because look at the next one. M. Capone says, Your mom is savage. Thank you. <laughs> savage right. is a compliment. So, four of four hit ons to, to three for me, one for you. Yep. That's all it. right. That's enough for hit on or shit on. That's all our hit on and shit ons we got today. Thank you for your comments. We appreciate that. We appreciate no matter where you place them, if you're on TikTok or if you're on. YouTube or any other socials, we're all we're everywhere. Mom, let's go into mom's, mom's news, news. Mom's news. Mom's, mom's news. news. Mom's news is a segment of the show where my mother shares earth-shattering, groundbreaking, need-to-know info. Mother, what do we got this week? Well, this was actually brought to you by your sister as well. All of a sudden, she's very into giving me information that I can share with everyone, which is great. This one was actually something, of course, I wouldn't have found on my own because I would not be on this kind of site. It's actually not the, what would I usually like? I like the... Um, the mirror. I always like the mirror. Tabloids. Tabloids. The, 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 the best sources around. Right, exactly. This is from the New York Times. Oh, is this is something you would never look into. Never. Some monkeys use stone tools for pleasure studies suggest. Oh. And there are long-tailed... Macaws at the sacred monkey forest sanctuary in a Balinese town in Indonesia. I want to go there, Kim. I'm down. The monkeys are skilled stone handlers. They are using rocks to dig up roots, cut plants, and crack open an array of delicacy, including fruits and nuts. But some monkeys also appear to be using stone tools for um, something else. What? Researchers found that the the macaws, I don't know how to say it, macaws. I thought macaws were type of bird. No, they're not. They're monkeys. Okay. They frequently rub or tap stones around their genitals and that these behaviors are associated with signs of physiological arousal that other stone handling actions do not prompt. Wow. They are the, they are the first... They're the first sex toy users. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I'm very happy that you found that. In mother. other words, the monkeys appear to engage in a form of self-directed and tool-assisted masturbation. Amazing. It, and I read this article. I was like, this is unreal. Why are you acting like we're not We're not done? I just had a few more things I'd like to say about Please this. Please wrap it up, mother. The monkeys also... We're wrapping it up, mom. The monkeys also sometimes use stones to rub or tap around their genitals and grind, prompting what to... the researchers call sex toy hypothesis, which is what I was talking about. I am right. And that was mom's news. Mom's news. Mom's news. It's time for... Oh, no. The segment of the this, this show that reminds you of like a stone hitting against your cock. I'm going with a stone hitting against your head. It's like a like a huge uh, boulder in your vulva. A boulder in the vulva. Yes. Okay. It's Cam's Uppers. Cam's Uppers is the place to be. Fun, Fun living is the life for me. me. It's Cam's Uppers, the segment of the show where I get to share something near and dear to my heart. Something that my mother typically finds. I mean, it makes me want to fart. <laughs> or? <laughs> what? It has a little heart. Or? And sometimes you have to take a little cart and move yourself off the, off the, <laughs> off, off the roof. But they don't usually rhyme, so I'm, I'm amazed. I'm just trying to rhyme because I know what's coming soon. It's Cam's Uppers. All right. I want to just be brief about this. Please. You, I haven't started it yet. You're already giving me the signal to wrap it up. Here's what I'll say. I had kind of a revelation in my meditation class. Yes. I was having some trouble with someone okay. who I thought it was very difficult to communicate with. Okay. And so, someone else in the class asked the meditation teacher, what do we do in this situation? Yeah. 
when it's very difficult to communicate with someone, what, you know, and, and they don't seem to want to engage and to improve the situation. And the meditation teacher says, give this person a gift. Ah, in other words, kill them with kindness. Well, or just show them that you care about them because sometimes that's all they need. She also said she didn't know why this would work, but she heard it from one of her teachers. Well, I followed in suit, and this tactic works. Lo and behold, you give a gift. You give a gift. So it's kind of the counter action that you think you should be taking. That's kind of why I'm interested in this. The action that I usually feel when I'm in conflict with someone is either to fight, run away from them and not engage, or to confront and fight. Rarely is it the counteraction, which is to yeah. give them a gift, yeah. an act of love. It ended up working, and I'm here to pass this on to you because I think this is it's a very smart thing to Thank do you. if you're I, having trouble communicating with someone. I would have liked you to, to, to do that one before I went to the condo association president. Give them a gift. Yeah, I should give them a, you know, I'll give them a gift of COVID. <laughs> That's the gift I'm going to give them. This Cam's Uppers. Cam's Uppers was actually very informative and short, sweet, to the point. I liked it. Thank you very much, Mother. I want to thank everyone who has made this show possible. Oh. It, that's okay. especially... Our sneaky little freaks that are listening. The sneaky freak listeners who support us on Patreon. Oh, yeah. Our Patreon members are our favorite peeps. Patreon.com slash sex talk with my mom. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. If you haven't checked it out, please check out our Patreon.com slash sex talk with my mom page. You can su- support us financially. It lets us keep the lights on in this wonderful studio, and we will continue to help us pay for our wonderful editor, Dale. and um, Dr. Self Tapes, our studio. Our studio. And, and so if you like the show, please support us. Send us a few bucks on patreon.com. We're going to have a, a Sneaky Freak patron party. We tend to do this every month, although this past month we got a little... I'm so sorry, COVID. COVID. But it, I'll be reporting live from Columbia on September 14th. Oh, We're going to be Zooming. Boy, you guys have got to join in if you want to see this one. So we'll, September 14th at 5 p.m. Pacific time, most likely. I don't know how my life is going to look like over there, but it's probably going to be 5 p.m. Pacific time. Didn't someone ask you, like, how are you going to do it over there? And they, I thought they said, you mean you can use computer, computers over there? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do it. And also, we really appreciate... Anyone who's shared this with a friend, that's how we grow our show. And, and how do you, they share it with it. a friend? Go to TikTok and hit, hit that arrow and share it to another friend. Wherever you, whatever device or, or platform you tend to engage with us on. Right. If there's you're a, listening there's, to there's the a, podcast, please share the podcast by text. If you're on TikTok, share that TikTok with a friend. Or a Spotify. Whatever you're, wherever you're listening to this or engaging with us, we really appreciate it. We do. On that note... We've reached the end, Mother. I say adios to you. Adios. adios. Sayonara. And te amo. And te amo. It's, I think it's like te quiero is more appropriate. but I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to figure that out. Anyway, Mother. And let me tell you about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. And wishing Cam a very fun trippies. Trippies. Little trippies. Little trippies. We hope he has a great time. Thank you, Moot. I love you. Love you. Love you, listeners, too. Love you, listeners. Bye. Bye. You are listening to a Pleasure Podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com.